लाइट इज द लाइट ओके लाइट फाइन सर फाइन सर नाउ द मीटिंग इज बींग लाइव स्ट्रीम्ड Is it better, sir? Sir. Professor Mr. Am I audible? Sir, fully audible, sir. Okay. Can I'll just share the screen and see whether it's okay. is the screen visible no acha sir screen host has disabled acha as you will allow professor misra you have to enable ha darike हाँ द्वारिका सार को एनेबल पड़ो स्क्रीन शेयर यू आर म्यूट प्रोफेसर द्वारिका यू आर म्यूट हैव यू एनेबल्ड मी द्वारिका यू आर म्यूट प्रोफेसर द्वारिका सर I I have already done co-host. Now you can. Is it visible? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So we start at seven, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. The Thank time. You. Then let me. प्रणाम श्रीनिवास सर आई हैव ऑलरेडी फॉरवर्डेड द यूट्यूब लिंक सो आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स ऑफ द लर्निंग कम्युनिटी टू शेयर इन द अमंग द पियर ग्रुप व्हाट्सएप रिपोर्ट है सर ये सर आई हैव ऑलरेडी सेंड इन द व्हाट्सएप and also in the learning community group fine fine uh, namaskar namaskar are tikke dr r k swai will help us sit out tikke share kar do sir 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 youtube link sir sir mm. professor dar ka mate au thare enable karan to sita disable hai itla mu off kar de okay 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 enable सर वन सेकेंड प्लीज वन से
Sir, you are co-host. Okay. Simultaneously, Professor R.K. Ball also co-host. Professor Ramna also. Yeah. It... Fine, sir. Yeah. Okay. screen set Is the screen sharing happening? Yes, sir. Okay. So there is something else has got into the laptop. I don't know what is this. Okay. Professor Mr. if there is a problem, I'll uh, leave and join again. One, give me just one second. Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, sir. Uh, good, good evening. evening. Good evening. So two minutes more, we'll start just after two minutes. Esteemed viewers, we'll be starting just after two minutes. Start seven, we're going to start.
Uh, Professor Ball, uh, can we start now, just SARP 7? Uh, sir, can we uh, start? Do you permission? Are you okay watch? with the laptop or any screen sharing? Any issues, sir? <laughs> HR Khan sir, can you, can you start now with your due permission? Uh, am I audible? Uh, there is some problem with this. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. You are audible and uh, the sharing of screen is also there. Oh, okay. Because can I start with your permission? I am not able to get. Can you give me just one minute? Then let me. Uh, yes, how do sir. I get out of this and start again? Let me just try. Just yes, give sir. Me. Yes, sir. Sir, unmute. Please unmute, sir. Okay. Am I am I audible now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. 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 Uh, I, 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 I'm I, I'm good to go. Yeah. Uh, sir, we can start now. Do you permission of chief guest? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Good evening and namaskar to all the viewers. On behalf of the learning community, I, Dr. D.N. Mishra, the principal of DAB School of Business Management, known as DSPM, welcome all viewers in this digital platform of the learning community. Sir, it is our great honor and pride, particularly for the learning community which is a completely voluntary organization where Professor Sri H.R. Khan, former Deputy Governor of Reserve Bank of India, who is an eminent resource person, agreed to deliver fourth memorial lecture, which is organized by the learning community in association with the PG Department of Commerce, Uttar University, under able leadership of Professor P.K. Hota. It is our duty to share the thought process of the learning community under the able leadership of Professor R.K. Ball, Professor D.B. Ramna, and many more eminent academicians in the field of the commerce and management. Sir, I just want to share the two thought process of this learning community. One, to empower the commerce students of Odisha through various key expert talk and various skill-oriented activities in phase manner. Besides that, sir, I want to draw the attention of the, all the viewers. The second objective is to organize various knowledge sharing session and training program for better knowledge management among the fraternity of the commerce management students in Odisha. Besides that, it is pertinent to mention that the learning community has organized many online lectures for the plus three commerce students during COVID-19. When there is no classes in the colleges due to COVID-19, the learning community came forward to have the free classes to the students community of Odisha, which is highly appreciated by many stakeholders, particularly the students, parents, and also government. At last, but not least, we are looking forward the support and blessing of all teachers to facilitate the activities of the learning community for the greater interest of the students community and commerce education in Odisha. Now, I request my teacher, 
present head of the department eminent professor p k hota to speak few lines about professor b n patnaik over to professor p k hota for your deliberation please sir thank you dr dwarikanath mishra am i audible to you all sir you are audible thank you first of all thank you and uh, the your college dev school of business management and the learning community for taking this initiative for arranging this fourth memorial lecture of our beloved teacher professor b n patnaik and uh, this type of memorial lecture gives us inspirations to follow such an extraordinary person like professor b n patnaik not only for us for all the students community even who do not know him so i thank you i also extend my warm welcome to all the um teachers professors students and especially uh, mr harun rashid khan the former deputy governor of reserve bank of india and uh, many a committee who was heading known as khan committees and the policy making initiative taken for the economic development of the country sir uh, we are really obliged for your presence here <coughs> my teacher prof bawal is here prof ramana is here prof misra is here many a uh, teacher i can see here so warm welcome to you all we are all here to Uh, again, I remember Professor Pian Portnick. We cannot just forget him, Professor Pian Portnick, because he is such an eminent pers personality that always he is before us. But it is just an occasion. What a charismatic personality he was! An extraordinary human being, a great teacher, a great mentor, guide for the students, a humble human being, thorough gentleman. i can say that his heart his chamber his residence these were always open to anybody and everybody at any any point of time he has got a small family with only one son bulu but we find that his big quarter must be always full with people and his chamber is also always will visited by many people he is such a nice person always blessed with us a uh, nice and attractive smile that you cannot forget his face he is such a great man and uh, my teacher uh, i am just privileged i can say to be a student and a colleague at the same time in the department of commerce of kolkata university so on behalf of the pg department on behalf of kolkata university kolkata university also because Uh, today i am in charge of the chairman pt council and vice chancellor also so on behalf of the university also i pay my deepest tribute to my professor pian patnaik and also to his memory so nice thank you all just i can say that some words for professor pian patnaik for the people who do not know him that professor vijayanarayan patnaik was born on 30th September 1937. Ah, <laughs> uh, his son of Sri Sujana Patnaik. His mother's name was Shamati Geeta Devi, <clears throat> and uh, his wife, um, my uh, our all beloved madam, who always feeds us with the uh, different types of uh, sweets and mistakes whenever anybody visits his house, Madam Subhasini Devi. He has done his matriculations from Pyari Mohan Academy, Kota, ISC from Ravensa College, now Ravensa University. He has done his BCom from Kalikot College, Barampur. He has done MCom from BHU Banaras Hindu University in the year 1958. He joined as a lecturer in Gangadhar Meher College, Sambalpur, in September 1958. He has also worked. in rajendra college balangir he joined pg department of commerce utkal university 
in October 1963. Just what to say that Utkal University PG Department of Commerce was established in 1962 by founder Professor Surjakanta Das. And Surjakanta Das started this department with his two working hands, Professor Ramaganta Jena and Professor B.N. Patnaik. And these two hands and the head, Professor S.K. Das, these people responsible for the growth, development, and everything for the PG Department of Commerce. What we are today is because of these three persons, Professor Sujakanta Das, Professor B.N. Patnaik, and Professor Ramakanta Jena. He is a great teacher, and uh, he is fond of teaching taxation and accounting. Particularly, we love uh, learning taxation from him. The different uh, uh, rules, regulations, and very complex Uh, Professor Bhutra, some uh, technical issues. You have your voice problem. Perhaps the network is low. You can mute your video so that uh, audio would be okay. Video you can mute. Then audio would be okay. Professor Hota? Dr. Misra? Sir. Uh, is he there or from issue? There, sir, actually, his internet uh, issue is there. Professor Hota? Sir, perhaps uh, Sir is disconnected. I don't find okay. Sir. Fine, fine, fine. You can, you can call him over phone and check. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, we can proceed. Uh, I see network is so heal at the moment. Uh, he is trying to join. Uh, Dr. Misro, unmute Dwari. Uh, you can unmute Professor Hota. Dr. Sir, Misro. Sir, is, uh, it is already on. Uh, he is supposed to do. Uh, huh? 
ହଉ ଠିକ୍ ଅଛି ମୁଁ ଆଇ ଆମ ଟେକିଂ ହେଲା ଥ୍ୟାଙ୍କ ୟୁ ସମସ୍ତଙ୍କୁ ମୋର ନମସ୍କାର ଦେର ଇଜ ସମ ଟେକ୍ନିକାଲ ଇସ୍ୟୁଜ ୱିଥ ପ୍ରଫେସର ପି କେ ହୋତା ସୋ ହ୍ୱାଟ ହି ୱାଜ ଟ୍ରାଇଙ୍ଗ ଟୁ ସେ ଦ୍ୟାଟ ପ୍ରଫେସର ବି ଏନ ପଟ୍ଟନାୟକ ୱାଜ ଏ ଗୁଡ ହ୍ୟୁମାନ ବିଂ ଆୱାର ଟିଚର ଏଣ୍ଡ ହି ହେଜ ଏ ଲଟ ଅଫ କଣ୍ଟ୍ରିବ୍ୟୁସନ୍ସ ଫର ଦି ଡେଭଲପମେଣ୍ଟ ଅଫ ଅଲ ଅଫ ଅସ ହି ୱାଜ ଲାଇକ ଆୱାର ଫ୍ରେଣ୍ଡ ଫିଲୋସଫର ଏଣ୍ଡ ଗାଇଡ uh the next one is uh, we have to introduce our guest uh sri harun rashid khan and i will do that job uh, it's a difficult one i know actually we are very fortunate today to have sri harun rashid khan who will deliver the fourth memorial lecture of professor bijanar and patnaik all of you know that shri khan retired as the senior most deputy governor of reserve bank of india our apex bank and all of you also know that or all of you would be very happy to know that he is an alumni of bjp college our utkal university where he did his masters degree and also jnu where he did his mphil he served our central bank for nearly four decades handled many responsibilities received many awards and recognitions i will inform you a few of his contributions as the leader of many committees in rbi he chaired the committee on the rural credit and microfinance popularly known as khan committee professor hota was referring to that and he recommended many reforms in this area in the area of rural credit and microfinance his contributions for reserve bank reserve bank of india are many Uh, specifically in the area of capital markets in the area of financial inclusion payment and settlement system and also many it initiatives these ict initiatives brought a lot of transformation in reserve bank of india he also represented reserve bank of india on many international committees as the leader of the team yes no doubt he has left his legacy and footprints in rbi after retirement uh, he has been associated with many important committees of government of india reserve bank of india and also securities and exchange board of india currently he is a senior advisor to kpmg india and also in the board of many companies specifically in the banking and financial services sector is one of the independent directors he also works for the civil society as an active member in students uh, remember mahatma gandhi and also he is a founding member of odisha dialogues we are really grateful to you sir for accepting our request with this brief introduction i welcome once again our guest sri hr khan and i request you to deliver the memorial lecture in the memory of professor bijanar and patnaik uh, sri khan please thank you professor bal thank you professor mishra thank you professor hota uh, it's my great pleasure to be associated with this uh, event uh, to commemorate the 86th birthday of professor bijanar and patnaik uh, i am thankful to professor ramana and professor bal for inviting me uh, i had some pressing uh, personal and family uh, reasons so i was not very sure whether i would be able to uh, 
take up this assignment, but then there are a few reasons why I eventually accepted this invitation. One is as uh, Professor Bal said, I am an alumnus of Uttal University. So anything connected with Uttal University, <laughs> it's very difficult to say no. And more importantly, it is uh, to commemorate a great teacher like uh, Professor Vijayanar and Patnaik and whatever I heard from Professor Hota, Professor Bal and whatever I knew, uh, he was a great teacher, great mentor, great guide. And uh, he, along with uh, um, Professor Surjakanta Mishra, who was a close friend and colleague of my professor, Professor Siram Chandra Das. Uh, Surjakanta Das was very closely associated with Professor Siram Das. And uh, he, along with Professor Surjakanta Das and Professor Jena, were founding members of the Commerce Department. And uh, a teacher is always a teacher, whether I, he has taught us or not. So it, it's my uh, humble and small uh, token of uh, homage to that great uh, teacher. Uh, the other reason uh, I found uh, subsequently is that this world is very small and his son is very close friend and classmate and schoolmate of my wife, uh, Mr. Jainara. And I don't know whether he has joined this meeting. I have also met him in some event. And for the information of this audience, during pandemic, he has mastered uh, Hindi film songs. So I have heard some of his songs on WhatsApp. So <laughs> maybe in some other occasion, you should hear him. So thanks again for inviting me for this uh, uh, memorial lecture. Uh, I was just uh, discussing with Professor Ramana what should be the topic. Then eventually we uh, agreed on this topic. Then after having decided the topic, then now and then we realize whether it is does become slightly obsolete or dated. And today is much more excitement has happened because today was a policy day. And most of you must have uh, heard Governor Das over TV, the new policy which came today, uh, monetary policy. But then uh, this is about pandemic, which is still not over. I think there may be still re relevant. There are some takeaways. So I think uh, uh, there's no harm in uh, going back in history and trying to analyze what happened. Uh, during pandemic and how RBI responded. So I have a uh, uh, PPT, so which I'll uh, run through. So uh, I know it's uh, Friday evening, very difficult time. So I'll not bore you with too many slides. I have actually nine slides, uh, uh, excluding the introduction and conclusion. Uh, thank you. So I'll just quickly go through uh, those slides and time permits, we'll have some discussions. Is, is, is it visible now? This, uh... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. And uh, my, my voice is okay? Is yes, audio? sir. Okay, good. Yeah. Because there is a possibility of uh, the internet breaking down in between. So I have kept a geo dongle ready here. So there may be some uh, dislocation. So, uh, so this is, uh, we have heard of. Uh, global financial crisis. So this is uh, the great virus crisis. And what is this crisis? We are still trying to get out of this uh, crisis. And this is in a sense a turning point in history. And the world got divided into two, two time uh, uh, phases, uh, world before Corona and world after Corona. So the dividing line was BC and AC. And this was an unprecedented disaster uh, in terms of uh, uh, epidemiological, existential, economic, emotional, if I add cultural uh, crisis. And it, it, it's a sort of a black swan event. But this black swan event was in some sense uh, in some sense was uh, predicted by few people, including some movie makers. And the most talked about movie, which is available in YouTube, is Contagion, uh, who is, uh, was a 2011 film. So eight, nine years before this pandemic came by, it's an American medical thriller uh, directed by Steven uh, Soderbergh. And here, uh, the protagonist goes to a Macau casino and catches the virus and how and comes back to USA, how the pandemic spreads and how the scientists and the health officials 
are struggling to find out the origin and trying to find out, control it and uh, introduce virus. So this is the point is from a science fiction, it becomes such a stark reality. And we are still going through this phase. It is not fully over, though people are telling that we are maybe at the end of the tunnel. So this, this uh, uh, humongous crisis at a uh, impact almost 190 countries all over the world. And till yesterday, the official figure, you know the official figure all of us know, is how uh, highly underestimated, highly underreported. But if you just take the official estimate, 62 crore people were affected, confirmed cases. Out of that, 65 lakh people died. And India, which was the second largest in terms of impact of COVID uh, after US, we had reported cases. Again, I'm underlining the word reported cases of 4.5 crores and death exceeding uh, close to 5, uh, 5 lakh 30,000 uh, cases. And this health crisis, epidemiological crisis, soon became uh, spilled over to a, a, a huge uh, economic crisis because there were dislocation of economic activity, there was social distancing, the lockdowns. And in fact, one phrase become very, very popular during pandemics is the life and livelihood. So that got affected during this time. And global economy was hit like anything. And uh, in terms of output, employment, uh, there are tremendous impact. If you take India, for example, uh, in the, in the pandemic hit, towards the last leg of quarter one of 2021 financial year. In that quarter, the GDP is contracted by 25%, almost 25%. And just, just give me one second, I'll get my watch. <laughs> So GDP contracted by uh, 24 by 4% and the entire year of 2021, 20, it contracted by almost 7.3%. Uh, 7. 7. so this is uh, the context uh, which meant that both the government and the central banks, they have to play to, to tango. And because this was a once in a, li a lifetime crisis, and there, the coordination and collaboration was absolutely uh, necessary between the fiscal authorities and monetary authorities uh, to survive the crisis, support the recovery, and to strengthen the economy. So in the Indian context, we had one peculiarity. Um, uh, India, we had, as you know, we had a huge uh, fiscal deficit issues. So from fiscal side, from government side, supporting uh, revival of growth and providing uh, a fiscal stimulus was a big challenge. So in that case, RBI has to do a bit of a heavy lifting, so as to say. And RBI's response uh, has been to see that there is a growth revival, the markets and economy function smoothly, and there is financial stability is ensured. And almost uh, 100 measures were taken by uh, RBI. And one can, one can broadly uh, classify them uh, uh, into six buckets, uh, which I mentioned here, monetary policy action and liquidity action, financial market functioning, regulatory recalibrations, payment system initiatives, uh, communication for uh, confidence uh, and assurance. So if we go to uh, um, um, uh, monetary and liquidity management area, uh, in fact, uh, all of us know we have a inflation targeting framework, flexible inflation targeting framework, where the earlier prior to that, RBI used to have what is known as multiple indicator approach, uh, inflation, growth, financial stability, they were all uh, part of this uh, triad. But after uh, inflation targeting introduced in 2016, the primary focus became uh, price stability. So in a sense, it was a, a limiting factor uh, on the flexibility of RBI to navigate. But still then RBI navigated. And what happened, even though 
uh, officially it was inflation targeting rbi switched over to in practice to multiple uh, target uh, approach of both looking at the growth requirement as well as um, financial stability requirement so for the first meeting of mpc monetary policy committee which was scheduled uh, one week later they met one week before and uh, took uh, the preemptive actions uh, since we have uh, slightly delayed some of the slides i'll go a little faster and some slides maybe i'll spend some time and maybe on q and a we can elaborate further so rbi took uh, uh, strong uh, measures uh, in terms of conventional measures so what were they they were uh, cutting the rate because you know policy rate is very very important uh, for revival of growth uh, and uh, soothing the temperament so the policy rates were cut by uh, policy rate is reverse uh, repo rate which was cut by 115 basis points in two phases and the reverse repo rate you know we we had a corridor of um, 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 monetary policy corridor where the reverse rate policy rate sits in the middle and the msf marginal standing facility is on the top and reverse repo sits in the bottom now there is a slight twist in the tail we have got now standing deposit facility which is now another it this that provides almost sort of a uh, another angle to this corridor so in those days reverse repo uh, was the policy uh, operating rate we know even now also it is the operating rate so that was reduced by 115 basis point uh, in two phases as i mentioned and reverse repo by 155 basis point uh, for the youngsters repo rate is the rate at which Uh, financial institutions can borrow from the central bank reserve bank and the reverse repo rate is the rate at which they can supply to reserve bank whatever surplus money and earn some interest on that so this and there is what is known as cash reserve ratio that also was reduced by 100 basis points so that reduction led to liquidity generation of almost 137000 crore uh, in the system and there were few other tweaking done around computation of crr so that more money and more flexibility was available uh, to the banks uh, for augmenting the credit flow so what is important besides conventional measures rbi resorted to unconventional measures in a big way uh, during uh, gvc and you know this um, origin of unconventional measure is global financial crisis of 2007 8 when the conventional measures they could not succeed because you can't take the interest rate below zero negative so that is why there were other instruments are used basically they are in terms of there are basically three or four major unconventional measures which have now been practiced by different central banks and rbi also resorted to that one is uh, of course is uh, um, um, long term funding facility the other one is asset purchase mostly government securities third is uh, forward guidance so these were some of the measures which were uh, unconventional measures uh, are way too and one is uh, first thing was uh, ltro uh, was uh, uh, to provide funds to the system at the rate which is lower than the market rate which is the policy rate and uh, that released almost 1 lakh crore to the system um, um, liquidity uh, facility then and this got transmitted uh, to the market and there were what is known as targeted ltro uh, which was meant for uh particular set, uh, sectors and particular uh, segments of the economy uh, so one was uh, uh, meant for large corporate sector that was ltro1 so five uh, um, tranches were released ltro2 was meant for uh, nbfcs and mfis and through them to the system then again after that there was on tap uh, tltro which was meant for stressed sectors Uh, and we did uh, rbi did uh, 
a lot of open market operations, uh, which included GSAP, which is Government Securities Asset Purchase Strategy, uh, uh, Government Securities Asset Purchase Strategy, and that uh, provided a lot of liquidity to the system. So the liquidity system has avas with the liquidity almost three lakh, more than three lakh crore WMOs were done in 2021. And there is another uh, instrument which was used was Operation Twist. Operation Twist was uh, to compress long-term rates. So RBA was buying long-term bonds and selling short-term bonds so that the rates were compressed and got transmitted to the system. And for many, many years, RBA was not providing credit support to the different sectors, but this crisis they provided, used their balance sheet to provide support. Almost 75,000 crore were provided to NABAT, CDB, National Housing Bank, Exim Bank for on lending uh, to the segments which they are supporting. And there was special liquidity facility for mutual funds. Normally, central banks don't support mutual funds, but since there are a lot of freezing and seizure of the market, they provided. And there was one window for the small finance bank. So overall, this all these activities enabled liquidity augmentation to the tune of 17.2 lakh crore, which was 8.7% of the GDP. You know, uh, fiscal side, we had only contributed 2 or 3%, one of the lowest in the emerging market. But central bank stepped in and central bank provided almost close to 9% of GDP by way of uh, liquidity uh, enablement. So the next is, uh, uh, sorry. The next is the financial market uh, functioning because when there's a crisis hit, the financial mar markets dried up, risk premium went up for corporate bonds, CPs and all that. So that there was sort of a market seizure. So how do we address this uh, market seizure um, phenomenon? So one was, as I mentioned, the huge liquidity, both general and targeted uh, liquidity was there. And what happened because of that, for example, corporate bond uh, spread for five year spreads came down by 150 basis point. Three year spread came down by almost uh, 250, basis, 250 to 280 basis points. So that uh, created some sort of a sense of comfort in the market. Uh, the other one was maintaining uh, market infrastructure in the time of, uh, because you know, this crisis was very peculiar. Here, the systems were not down. IT system was not down. Physical system was not down. It is the human beings who are not able to come to the work and the men behind the system were not av available. So that was the problem. So how do you handle infrastructure? So you have to create, uh, so RBA, one of the first central banks, much before all this lockdown started, they created a bio bubble. And some of you know Bombay, it is there in Kargar. So they created a bio bubble. So the, all the major Departments of RBI, including the market department, monetary policy operation departments, people were put in a bio bubble, which we know in bio bubble in the context of cricket match. But so around 150 to 200 people, including vendors, were kept in the bubble for running the infrastructure. And the other thing was that most of the dealers will have to come to the bank, to the treasury, to have a stable internet connection and do the financial transactions. And <laughs> just now we saw what is the problem of. Uh, not having a good stable connectivity. So then it, it they used to function through what is known as infinite, that is the network provided by uh, Ariza Bank. So they went, switched over to internet use uh, for uh, market operations and that was enabled with all the safety features. The other was quite uh, the whole idea, even though there was a crisis, uh, RBI continued with its uh, reform uh, agenda the focus was increasing the depth and the breadth of uh, market, ease of access, protection of users, and uh, continue to promote innovation. So there are quite a few things I have listed. I will not go through that. This, this uh, PPT will be available uh, uh, to the organizers, uh, which can be shared. Uh, and most importantly, it is, uh, I just wanted to add one point, which Governor Das had also been mentioning is the orderly development of sovereign yield curve. So that uh, the, the sovereign yield curve, government security yield is the benchmark for the rest of the system. If that is moves orderly, then the rest of the system uh, interest rates 
uh, can be stable. So that has been the focus of these multiple activities of OMOs uh, and GSAP and Operation Twist for orderly development of uh, yield curve, which helped in uh, transmitting the entire uh, rate structure to the financial market. And importantly, assurance to the markets, which I'll come to uh, uh, on the last uh, slide. Then important, you know, Reserve Bank is a full service central bank. It is not just a monetary policy uh, maker of the country, but full service central bank. So regulation supervision is also one of the important responsibilities of Reserve Bank. So quite a few things were done in the regulatory side uh, to support both the borrowers as well as the financial institutions. Both were under stress. When the real sector is under stress, financial sector will face the consequences. So the whole idea was to provide support to borrowers under stress and relief to the financial in institutions. So th there were moratoriums are provided. You know, and there is a famous quote which is ascribed to Mark Twain. Banker is a person who lends you umbrella when it is a sunny day and takes it away when it rains. So the, the whole idea of RBA was to nudge the banks through regulatory dispensation that you should provide umbrella. This is, this is the stormy day, not a rainy day. So you have to provide, that's why all these measures were taken, moratorium was there, and there was resolution framework one and two, and Kamath committee came from 26 state sectors were identified for moratorium. The underlying principle was to help, the principal idea was to help um, those borrowers which accounts will be affected because of COVID-related uh, uh, lockdown and COVID-related dislocations. Not the old NPAs, they should not wash it, uh, taking the advantage of uh, COVID. So they said the accounts which are not overdue before 29th March 20, they will come under this uh, framework. So one framework for the large borrowers and the sec and the individual second framework was for the uh, MSMEs. Then there were quite a few relaxations provided to financial institutions. I will not go to the details, but one is reducing the risk weight and increasing the loan to value ratios. Uh, and some of the Basel related uh, implementation issues were also deferred so that banks get some breathing time in terms of managing their liquidity. And there were, uh, you know, Reserve Bank also deals with Foreign Exchange Management Act. So there, there were relaxations for export realization and export credit uh, limit from nine months to 15 months uh, and import payments also from six months to 12 months. These relaxations were provided. And as uh, you know, the whole idea was even though banks were to provide relief to the borrowers, they should not suffer. So they should also build up their own resilience. That is why all those accounts which were restructured, 10% provision was put on the bank so that they build the buffer. Similarly, there was a restriction on banks on paying dividend so that the money is available in their kitty to bolster their reserve. And the other important thing was this providing mark to market benefit under HTM category, I know whatever uh, securities are held or held to maturity, they are not subjected to mark to market. So they, they you don't have to provide for that. So that limit was increased from 19% to 23%. So that provided a big cushion to the banks. This is very interesting. Uh, this fiscal management, normally when you talk about fiscal management, we think of government. I have some special fascination for this area because I have been uh, involved in the debt management for a long, long time. Maybe in some other occasion, we'll, I, I can tell you how I used to manage the debt of the central and state government. So there has been a school of thought, very strong school of thought, that debt management and monetary management should be kept separate because there will be conflict of interest. Many of us, some of us, including me, we are strong believer that there is a strong influence, confluence, there is a strong synergy if debt management and monetary management are together. Uh, and this came to the fore during the crisis. And RB government's borrowings have become humongous during this period because there has been revenue shortfall because economic activity is not there. Revenue, revenue shortfall has been there and borrowing requirements there therefore has, will go up like anything. So how do we manage that? That is why RBI's role as a debt manager, along with its monetary management role, come, came to the uh, forefront. 
you you see the in 2020 21 the borrowing of central government was 13 lakh 70000 and the previous year it was 10 lakh 7 lakh 10000 and the state government borrowings also were quite quite large almost 8 lakh ton, uh, 8 lakh crore uh, 2021 compared to 6.35 trillion or 6 lakh 35000 previous year and remember in 2019 the borrowings were still low so this human cost borrowing has to be managed with this all these instruments were used open market operations which we discussed a lot of bonds were purchased by rbi and liquidity was injected including that under gsap mtm dispensation which i discussed and other measures of yield management rbi has something called nds home to that also they do uh, yield management and to take care of the resources of the government rbi provides wage and means advances so this this was increased both for the central government and the state governments for a temporary period to tide over their cash flow mismatches then uh, so this as i mentioned uh, this also helped the public sector units uh, government units to raise resources the point which i mentioned about easing up yield for the corporate uh, debt market segment the other uh, the part during the uh, this pandemic was several initiative for in the payment system so when when the banks were closed and people were afraid to go even to atm and touch the atm buttons so the digital payments became very very important and this uh, you know reserve bank over the years last few years uh, i have also been involved in that efforts have been made to move towards less cash or cashless uh, light society economy nobody is talking about cashless it has to be cash light or cashless uh, less cash so all these efforts which have been taken over the years they came to the forefront the the, the last payment system vision of reserve bank was 2019 to 22 which focused on uh, convenience competition cost effectiveness and confidence so these were uh, digital initiatives uh, for uh, transactions so that wheels of economy runs and people can pay for whatever transactions they are doing and one in, uh, instrument which came to the forefront is uh, uh, upi uh, which now almost everyone uses now and it, it has become so convenient google pay or whatsapp pay or phone pay um, so this this is uh, and this has now drawn global attention now singapore united uh, arab emirates france they are all asking us to collaborate on this uh, 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 universal payment interface uh, and during this period also a lot of efforts rbi took to popularize uh, digital payments and increase digital uh, payment awareness many of you must have seen in kbc rbi kehta hai amitabh bachchan in between uh, telling that rbi is telling like this and all that so that's one one example of rbi's initiative to popularize digital transaction and there were many instruments were used uh, for smooth payments uh, there are quite a few measures were taken i will not elaborate because time is not there only one one uh, one of the two or three things i will focus one is payment infrastructure development fund was created by rbi where rbi will contribute something and the card network um, uh, organizations will contribute so this money will be used to set up payment infrastructures like QR codes, posh machines, and all that in, in, in tier three to tier six cities, northeastern states, hilly areas, so that there is payment infrastructure is available. And there were regulatory sandbox experiments were allowed for uh, retail payments uh, using digital. And one thing during this period, we provided, Reserve Bank provided, and I'm sorry again and again, I'm talking we, uh, old habits die hard so 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 it was provided 365 into 24 into 7 sweep uh, sweep seamless and safe fund transfer you are now people like me and professor bal will remember 20 30 years ago to send a money you have to go to the bank and you have to pay money then you will say you will come tomorrow or in the afternoon to collect the draft the draft you have to post through speed post and the draft advice will go to the other branch so it was a 10 to 15 days i have to send money from one uh, place to another place now it is 365 24 into 7 uh, throughout the day and this is one of the few countries in the world which provides this 
and this 24 hours rtga started during pandemic only and during pandemic a lot of cyber security issues came that is why rbi also took initiative to see that the cyber security guidelines were uh, provided so let me also add as we are growing large number in terms of uh, digital payment unfortunately i think this is a topic for research some of the researchers uh, maybe utkal university or uh, dav school of management should look at cash requirement also has gone up digital payments are going up cash demand is going up this is a very intriguing situation so during pandemic also people were not going to draw cash but there were some cash demand what was happening nobody was depositing cash but some cash has to be dispensed so so rbi had to take proactive and out of box solutions to provide cash to the banks and cash to the currency chest so this particularly uh, hilly and um, areas like northeastern which is not always on the radar so that was because you have to provide digital uh, uh, facilities as well as uh, physical facilities so i think that was also handled well and and uh, very important uh, i think i will uh, close very soon uh, is uh, communication you know communication is one of the uh, important tools of uh, central banks uh, uh, toolkit is one of the important part of the central banks uh, toolkit and uh, so there this communication was handled um, uh, very very efficiently and the whole purpose was to provide people should know uh, very clearly what is the crisis res response what is the rational and give them conf confidence and give assurance of credibility of the central bank that we are there uh, and uh, will take care as somebody has put it uh, rbi hena so that to take care of economic and financial stability and to ensure that markets don't get into self fulfilling a negative loop so both statements are issued by government and rbi and governor uh, uh, das was in the forefront of uh, communicating and uh, uh, so he 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 so uh, rbi used multiple uh, channels press statements web interviews and this time this uh, during this phase social media including twitter was uh, hugely hugely introduced and governor das was very fond of uh, giving very beautiful language uh, whenever he used to convey to the public and uh, he, he he had some great quotes uh, for example uh, when he was uh, in the midst of uh, gloom and doom uh, he used to provide some light of uh, hope and he used to quote gandhi martin luther uh, epictus uh, abdul kalam chalendra in fact uh, last one people have uh, talked about is he quoted aaj phir jinne ki irada hai uh, from guide which is written by chalendra and in almost every policy including today's policy uh, he quotes uh, mahatma gandhi uh, uh, in that initial phase he said he quoted gandhi he said in the midst of darkness light persists and today for example his case that we remain wakeful we remain vigilant we keep striving so this this is and this forward guidance uh, 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 assumed importance uh, for assuring uh, the market about the accommodative stance of rbi as long as it is necessary and to do whatever it takes but only pro problem during this communication if any is that possibly rbi was uh, not mindful of limits of what our central bank can do and that was not uh, communicated to uh, the market so how do we do the final assessment of role and response and uh, responsibility of rbi during uh, the covid pandemic there are um, obviously the, it has uh, uh, come out with flying colors there are laurels uh, you know in any economic development and growth of any nation three things are very important they are uh, tried of pri policies resources and institutions and when you want to assess some event and role of an institution in that in fact there is a famous uh, quote which is attributed to juan lai juan lai who was uh, prime minister of china when he was asked uh, what is the impact of french revolution in 1972 french revolution happened in 1789 
when 1972, who was asked about what is the impact of French Revolution, he said it is too early to tell. Almost 200 year old. After that, he's saying too early to tell. So similarly, the, we are still passing through uh, this pandemic. It may be too early to assess. But overall, it has uh, crowned itself with the glory. And uh, one can one can give all the laurels to Reserve Bank for cushioning growth, third wings through monetary action, liquidity flow, yield management, smooth debt management, financial stability, orderly market functioning, digital payment initiatives, and timely, transparent, and very assuring communication to the market and the uh, public. Uh, in fact, uh, when there was a recent uh, 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 Ipsos survey of which are the most trusted institutions in India. It has come out with main three. First one is Supreme Court, second is Reserve Bank, third is PMO. So this is this partly, um, I think, can be ascribed to the role and response of RBI during the pandemic. Uh, in fact, uh, Governor Das had uh, mentioned uh, in his first uh, COVID-related statement that tough times never last, only tough people and tough institutions do. Uh, and, um, you know, this is, let me just add one or two sentence. Uh, maybe I'm slightly biased. Uh, Governor Das, uh, when he was appointed, I was asked, he's a student of history, uh, not an economist uh, by, by, by education. So when I was asked by one of those uh, uh, interviewers that uh, a person who is not a PhD in economics and all that, he becomes a governor, uh, will he be able to manage? Then I had said, I remember. I said, um, central banking is, is a science, central banking is an art, central banking is also magic. And if you can add, you can call it black magic. So it is not that, you know, uh, IMF Christian Lagarde was the MD of IMF. She was a lawyer and a politician. So it is not that only economists can handle people who have sense of proportion, who have well-seasoned, well-rounded experience, they can deliver. I think uh, Governor Das has uh, proved in no... Um, uh, by all means, uh, that he was capable. And we feel proud about him, partly because he also uh, belongs to this part of this country. Uh, but uh, despite all the laurels, there are few lurking fears uh, because some actions are RBI could have taken, it, it didn't take. For example, uh, the long-standing demand of purchase of corporate bonds, which have given boost to the corporate bond segment, that was not looked at. And challenges do persist. Uh, uh, in terms of employment, in terms of output, and uh, that were questions whether RBI become too much uh, uh, aligned with government and autonomy was uh, compromised, uh, and whether by doing so many uh, accommodative steps, we have sown the seeds of a future socks, for example, inflation, which we are facing. But overall, I would say my personal view is that given that context, RBI has done a tremendous job. Of course, we know every time you come out of crisis, a new crisis comes. For example, after that, when things were stabilizing, Ukraine crisis came. And now we are now the global uh, market uh, uncertainty and volatility because of uh, advanced countries, central banks raising interest rates. So that crisis has come. So it is, it is always you run from one crisis to other. But if you take a very dispassionate view, I think, uh, I'll give full marks to uh, the Central Bank, Reserve Bank of India uh, under Governor Das. So let me let me let me stop you. Thank you once again uh, to um, uh, Department of uh, Commerce, Learning Community, and uh, DAB School of Management. Thanks. Thanks again, uh, Sir Khan sir. Sir, can you take some question as per the schedule of the program, if you allow? I have no issue because it's already eight. So I am sorry. <laughs> I, so I have. I can take one or two questions. No issue. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, uh, two, uh, two uh, information we are having to have the question. Uh, I'm just uh, mentioning the name. Uh, Pragya Srivastav, uh, are you listening to me? Pragya Srivastav? Pragya Srivastav, you have sent a message. Pragya Srivastav? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Have your question. Hello, sir, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, good evening, sir. So my question is, uh, what is the impact of buy now, pay later companies on the payment system in India? And uh, like, what are the 
RBI policies regarding such companies. Can you tell? Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, sir. So my question is, uh, what is the impact of buy now pay later companies on the payment system in India, and uh, what are the policies RBI policies regarding such companies? I am not able to get it. What is the impact of the buy now pay later companies? Buy oh, now buy pay now pay later. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, PNPL, acha, buy now yes, and pay. Okay, okay, okay. You know, this is um, this is being uh, discussed and uh, debated. So, what has happened? Sometimes it's a very interesting question. Sometimes uh, fast payment mechanism, it is convenient, it is cost effective, but it also has risks involved. So, buy now pay later means you can increase indebtedness and leverage of the borrower. You will be a, you may lend to a borrower who is not credit worthy, and he will get into a debt trap, and that there that could be so. That is why RBI is causes, and they they have, they have now focusing on some sort of a um, um, restriction on buy now and pay later. For example, credit card is a buy now pay later example, but credit card has a whole host of regulations around it. Now, the recently there have been detailed guidelines on credit cards and debit cards in terms of customer protection, giving the transparent way of what is the interest rate you are charging and you can't uh, renew the credit card with customer's consent. So there are customer protection safeguards are available, but in many buy now pay later initiatives, uh, it is it is not there. So I think uh, RBI has rightly a cautious about that. That is why your recent digital lending guidelines also has some elements of that. So, swift and fast payment system is fine, but prudence and customer protection also, and data privacy also has to be kept in view. Thank you. Yes, one more question, uh, sir, can take. Uh, sir, you can stop the screen share. Yes, Aditi Choudhury. Yes, you have raised your hand. Yes, Aditi Choudhury. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, very good evening, sir. Sir, so my question is, uh, so, uh, so my question is, what is your opinion, um, opinion on the fear of global recession? Opinion on? Global recession. No, this, uh, <laughs> this itself will <laughs> need a separate uh, uh, discussion. <laughs> Detail. But, uh, you know, just to give a context, today's policy was announced by governor, you will you would, uh, see, so he would, so in an Indian context, though there are domestic buffers are available, we are also affected by global uh, events. And uh, this contagion uh, also comes from the advanced central banks, if they raise uh, uh, policy, uh, uh, so there will be interested differential between us and, uh, for example, US, and the money will flow that side. So there will be a lot of volatility in the market. And uh, you will have imported inflation uh, also from overseas. So the, we can't remain decoupled. The third point is that in an integrated world, we can't remain decoupled. And very important is that we are also an external oriented economy. Many years ago, we are only inward looking economy. Now we have a lot of exports and import, 30-40% of our GDP is import and export. If there is recession abroad and demand goes down, our exports will be affected. And exports are affected means you have an impact on uh, external sector, uh, you have an impact on employment, and you impact on output and uh, GDP. So I think in an in, in a, in, in a interlinked world, so recession, particularly advanced country who, who are our major trading factor, Part of, uh, partners we will have impact on us. So we have to navigate this difficult time uh, with whatever best we can do. I can take one more if, if, if there is. Yes, last question, anyone? Last question. M Mimansa, are you present? Mimansa Manti. Okay, uh, sir, uh, sir, there is a one question if you agreed that Brahmaputra Bishwar. 
Yes, Brahmaputra Bishwan, unmute yourself, have the question, the last question. Good evening, sir. Sir, my question is how the upcoming digital currency issued by RBI would be different from existing cryptocurrencies? How central bank currency will be different from? The existing cryptocurrencies that are widely accepted right now. Interesting question. No, uh, crypto is uh, is by private players. So digital currency, central banks will be a, like a fiat currency. And this, uh, the design principles are being worked out. Some countries have started. So uh, we have to wait and watch in what shape it is coming. Uh, but um, so in a very in a very crude manner, whatever money you are holding in your wallet, you will hold it in uh, currency. You will hold it in a uh, digital form so uh, and it will have a both the wholesale part and retail part so we have to wait whether because if the directly you have a dealing with uh, central bank then people may bypass the banks if you bypass the banks so what happens to credit creation so these are some of the questions we have to look at and uh, uh, before we, the, the final design principles of uh, central bank uh, digital currencies uh, decided I think some guidelines will be coming uh, next few months. Let us watch for that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Pro pro over to Professor R.K. Paul. Uh, and uh, I request uh, uh, Dr. P.K. Manti, Professor P.K. Manti. Uh, Professor P.K. Manti, please. Vote of thanks. Please unmute. Professor P.K. Manti, please. Sir, we are grateful that uh, some of the students' question is being addressed. I'm sure yeah. they are encouraged uh, by with your wisdom, sir. So it is a great honor yeah. for us. Uh, I am offering we... to come for a separate interface with students at some convenient time. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will arrange. We will arrange, sir. Sri <laughs> H.R. Khan, uh, our honorable speaker uh, in the fourth memorial lecture, in honor of uh, our Professor B. N. Patnaik, my respected teacher, Professor Anjan Kumar Ball, Professor Hota, PG Department of Commerce, my colleague, Dr. Ramanna, Dr. Mishra from DSPM, my faculty colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, let me pay my respect, my pranam, to my teacher, Professor B.N. Patnaik, in whose memory we are organizing this memorial lecture. Professor Patnaik was not only a great teacher, but also an excellent human being. He has taught us so well that whatever we are today, it's all because of him. We are fortunate today to have Mr. Khan to deliver the fourth memorial lecture on this great topic, roles and response of RBI during the great virus crisis. Mr. Khan, I must congratulate you for the way you explained, the way you explained the roles and responses of RBI. Uh, an excellent speech, I must say. And uh, it is quite interesting to know how RBI managed during the COVID crisis. It was interesting to hear from you that the, there was a world before Corona and world after Corona. And uh, yes, we are not yet out of COVID, but the manner in which RBI has intervened, it has led us through this, this, this uh, hundred, once in a hundred year century you know, uh, pandemic crisis. Life and livelihood got affected. There was widespread disruptions, but economy was on the move because of the uh, uh, RBI's intervention. You have nicely explained how the fiscal stimulus were provided by RBI, the credit support to NABARD, uh, B, Exim Bank. And it was quite interesting when you described the bio bubble. In fact, I was reading an article by uh, Mr. Michael 
uh, Patro, uh, the current uh, deputy governor of RBI. Uh, in that, uh, I, I came across this bio bubble and how RBI has uh, taken the initiative, uh, had taken the initiative of putting aside 150 officers so that uh, they will take uh, all the necessary steps so that the economy will not suffer. It was a great initiative by Reserve Bank of India. And uh, one interesting uh, lesson that uh, uh, this, this pandemic has taught us, you also explained it very nicely, the digital payment uh, uh, that we all have, uh, uh, the, uh, all have learned and we are using, everyone, almost everyone is using. And during that time, well, we were uh, at a very nascent stage. Now it is gaining momentum. And uh, it is said that in coming 20 years time, maybe it will be a cashless economy. Though it is difficult to say that economy will become cashless, still economy will be using cash, but more and more people will be using the digital mode of payment. And uh, you also said that there are challenges. Yes, I agree with you, sir. There are challenges, but in spite of all the challenges, the economy uh, is on course despite all the challenges because uh, the timely intervention of Reserve Bank of India. Uh, you also said that despite challenges, some things could have been done better. Yes, we agree. There may be some difficulties, some challenges we don't know sitting at home. And uh, 100 marks to RBI for whatever they have done. It's a, it's a great effort by RBI. They have instilled the confidence in the minds of the people because the e economy never stopped. Economy might have slowed down, but economy was always in the move. And the commitment, the kind of commitment uh, shown by RBI has given that confidence to all the Indians and also uh, the Indians, who, I mean, the, the people who are also staying abroad. Uh, yes, RBI has uh, done a fabulous job, has done a tremendous job. So it was quite interesting to listen to you, sir. You, your speech was uh, very inspiring and motivating. And uh, we came to know a lot about RBI. So yes, again, 100 marks to Reserve Bank of India and the entire team of RBI. Thank you very much, sir. We will definitely have you once again uh, for this, uh, uh, for, for, for a seminar like this. Thank you very much. And at the same time, I would also thank uh, Dr. Mishra from DSBM, uh, my colleague, Dr. Divi Ramana, who has taken all the initiative uh, to organize this seminar. And uh, I must take Professor Ranjan Bal's name, without which it, th this will not be complete, because Professor Ranjan Bal is not only our teacher, but also the main driving force for this learning community activities. Without him, this would not have been possible. And uh, I must thank all the students, all the teachers, all ladies and gentlemen who have actively participated in this uh, seminar and uh, made it uh, so interesting. Thank you very much. And I also would like to thank all the people who have worked behind the scene. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor P.K. Mahanti. Now I request, uh, please you. unmute the video so we can have some, some photographs, now photograph for the record of learning community. Uh, I request uh, all the digital viewers, please unmute your video, please. Dr. Mahanti, uh, you can have some yes. photograph, please. Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Simultaneously, I would like to request all the technical uh, team members to please take the screenshot and try to cover on. Thank you. Dr. Mishra, you check uh, whether our Professor R.K. Zena is there or not. Dr. Swain. Sir, they will take everybody, sir. All screen will be taken. Arun Babu, please take all the photo, uh, that digital photograph. So this will be record and of the learning community. The entire video uh, is already in the YouTube. And every year also we are keeping record of that.
it is a really great honor and pride as i mentioned so we have some eminent people also i forgot to mention i can see uh, uh, professor manoj panda uh, reputed economist and <laughs> what is that dialogue member is there uh, mr dasharath misra i can see he was cgm rbi uh, quite a few very senior and learned people in the group so thank you very much for joining this thank you thank you everyone thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you everybody for uh, that uh, we have already taken the photograph for the record thank you sarya chand ke dr misra yes sir sarya chand ke jana sir nahi sir na anti sir ke jana purni to sir so we can we can log off now yes sir yes, yes sir yes sir thank you thank you once again thank you sir thank you मैडम मैडम अच्छा कि पद्मा मैडम मैडम नमस्कार मैडम नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन लीव यदि स्टूडेंट्स आर हियर यू कैन लीव